Hello Aries and a very warm welcome to your annual forecast 2024 until 2025. As always, the years are getting bigger and more powerful, but in some ways this year is a, a transitional year as we're moving away from the frequencies of earth and water, slightly slower frequencies, and we begin to move into the fire and air frequency. Now, always on these annual fo forecasts, I focus on the outer planets because they move more slowly. The inner planets I use for your monthly forecasts, which I do hope you will watch as well. So let me give you the highlights. The first highlight is that Pluto begins to make its final shift. It goes a little bit there and back during this year into Aquarius, into your 11th house, where it's going to stay for about 20 years. So I'm certainly going to be covering that. That's a very important shift um, personally in our personal lives, but also as a collective in raising our consciousness. And it's also going to shift us into a greater knowledge of technology the airwaves, everything to do with vibrations and healing and rays of energy. So this whole uh, shift into frequency and energy and magnetics, all of this is going to come greatly from this plutonic shift. That's one. Your ruler Mars is going to go retrograde in December. So we don't really worry about it at this point, but I'm just planting it in there and I'll show you where in your chart it will fall a little later on in the video. Jupiter changes sign once a year and Jupiter will change sign and go from your second to your third house in the middle of the year and I'll explain that. So Jupiter changing sign is Jupiter rules growth, expansion, learning, abundance, wisdom. So it will be a life area that you are to grow, to explore, to learn from. And as we move collectively from Taurus into Gemini, we're moving again into this air frequency. So Pluto into Aquarius air, <coughs> excuse me, Jupiter into Aquarius air. We're working with the power of the mind and the mental frequencies, which of course goes so much more quickly than a physical aeroplane or a physical train or a car. We're going to be able to move energy much more quickly and science is also gonna catch up with a lot of that. All Mercury retrogrades are in fire signs this year. I'll tell you when, but to give you the overview here, Mercury in fire signs has to do with inspired thinking, innovative thinking, taking the initiative, taking the lead, and that's certainly you, lovely Aries. You're the start of the zodiac. You're the first. You rule the head and the brain. And I think there's going to be some significant progress in all of this area to do with all the senses, the eyes, the hearing, the taste, the smell. All of this, I think, is going to be accelerated in its growth, its research, its scientific discoveries. There's a lot. Exciting. And I will be covering, of course, the eclipses. So January the 21st, Pluto will come into this 11th house where it will stay until September. So we're make, you're making this transition of Pluto from the 10th to the 11th house. And what you're really looking at is taking your power, your strength, all the things you've learned, your creative abilities, and sharing them in some way with a wider whole, a wider community. So it might be that you've got gardening skills and you share that, or you've got cooking skills, or you've got coaching skills. Whatever you're good at, it's about bringing that further and wider and sharing more of your gifts as deeply as you can, being willing to 
go an extra mile and have the power to transform people's lives because this is very transformative of a wider community of people through your innovations and initiatives. It looks as though as well, you're going to be working with the power of friendships and the power of groups. Two or three or four coming together with the same intention, with the same goals can be very, very powerful. So you might be also investigating that. And you may find that your social circle, your friends profoundly needs to change with the kind of person that you are blossoming into. We've got an eclipse, lunar eclipse on March the 25th in your relationship house and on April the 8th, a solar eclipse. So these first set of eclipses and also the second set a little bit, uh, we've also got, we'll have a, a solar eclipse in October in the relationship house. So the eclipses are happening in your first and seventh houses. So be prepared for some changes in relationships, changes in how you see a relationship. There may be a physical shift. There may be an ending, a new beginning, a deepening, all kinds of possibilities in the area of relationship, but it's going to be stimulated strongly uh, towards the end of March. And these eclipses last for a good six months. So you're going to find that this whole area of relationships, you may need to learn to be a little more adaptable, maybe to compromise a little more when needed, but at the same time, know where are your boundaries and what's important to you and where do you need to take a risk? Maybe in an existing relationship or opening yourself up to a new relationship and trusting somebody new because that takes a lot of courage too. May the 25th, Jupiter will come into your third house where it will stay until June of 2025. So about just over a year. This suggests that from the middle of the year, this is a wonderful time for learning, studying, writing, teaching, sharing information, expanding your knowledge, expanding your boundaries, your mind. It can be a very exciting time of really gathering information that can be valuable to you and to others. So be ready to share nuggets with others. And you may also have a very profound effect on them because that Pluto and the Jupiter are resonating together. This can also bring great amounts of wealth. So if you use your energy wisely, you can create wealth for yourself and again, for many others in that process. <clears throat> the Mercury retrogrades are in April, August and November, and they're going to hit the fire houses, the first, the fifth and the ninth houses. All right. So I'm going to suggest that you're going to be reflecting about yourself and what you want in life. And there may be changes there. You're going to be reflecting about your creativity and maybe bringing out more of the joyfulness that is inside you anyway. We try and keep it down a little bit, but you can't keep it down forever because it will come up. So it's allowing the creativity to bubble up. And you may also be reassessing during this year your spiritual journey, your spiritual path in some way and taking it to deeper levels. On September the 18th, we've got a lunar eclipse here and in October, a solar eclipse in the relationship house. So this, these eclipses, again, you're getting triggered in the relationships again. So really study your relationships. Be ready to listen carefully. Know when to take action, when to be silent. You're going to be learning a lot in this area. And you're also, as a result of all that, probably going to need a little more solitude and quiet time. Your ruler on December the 6th will go retrograde in this fifth house, again, asking you to reflect 
upon where you're putting your energy, where you're putting your time, and putting it more into the things that bring you joy and pleasure and bring out your talents and your gifts. So this is an exciting year, lovely Aries. Things are sort of bubbling upwards. That's how it, it looks. It looks as though things are heating up and bubbling up and you're going to be uh, using your mental power more than anything else. Remember that because mind above all affects the material world. It's not the other way around. So let me see what your Pleiadian Oracle card deck is for this coming year. Lovely Aries. Okay. So the spirits are saying we love you always. To know that it's time to be brave and to be courageous and know that you are loved. We look so much for human love. And perhaps the purest form of human love is the unconditional love of a mother to a child. But at some point, usually it is the mother who will pass into another realm and the child has to fend for itself in the world. This is tuning you into the fact that there is a divine energy of love that makes our world go round. And if you can tune more into that, you'll find that magic will happen in all life areas. So I wish you a wonderful year ahead. I thank you for listening. I would love your comments and feedback as to whether this is valuable. These, uh, these take a lot of preparation and thought and meditation. And I, I'm just hoping with all my heart that you find this useful and that you can uh, use these energies proactively and productively in your year to come. Much love. Bye for now.